Hi, I'm Katie Cat, and this is our weekly Astro Tarot. I am in a, a little bit of a different space than I usually sit at because it is just so bright out. I couldn't look at my phone without having to shut my eyes and my eyes tearing up because I have sensitive peepers. And uh, so I shifted over here. So we're in the little enclosure that I walk into before walking into my cabin. Um, it's, it's a nice little spot. The chickens were just talking it up though, so they might have another discussion. I'm not totally sure. Um, so if they do pipe in, I, I, I hope it's fine for you. Um, now, the reading today, whew, okay. We have a lot of major arcanas and they're referencing a few different uh, astrological transits that we're going to be experiencing not only this week that but that we'll be actually experiencing for months and so as i go through these cards i just want to you know i guess impress upon you that the work that we are engaged with right now is not some like short-term thing that's going to happen overnight it's something that's going to take us quite a few months to actually work through and, you know, potentially even a couple of years. And that's because the cards today are referencing particularly Saturn, which is in Pisces, and it is going to be in Pisces for two and a half years. But Saturn just went retrograde in Pisces. So it got up to about seven degrees, started going retrograde, and it will be retrograde until the beginning of November. And so this means that there's this time of review and a time of reorganization and uh, really taking in information to see how we need to be more responsible in this area of our life, particularly wherever Pisces is placed in your natal chart. Now, why that's so interesting to me is that, you know, not only do we have that, we also have a reference in here of the upcoming full moon that we're going to have in a couple of days, as well as the, the nodes changing sign this week. And in addition to that, um, you know, of course, the Neptune energy in Pisces as well, because Pisces has been referenced here. So there's this time of you know really turning things over much like the opening card actually the page of coin or page of pentacles like reviewing something reviewing our values you know a lot of times this card is referred to as you know examining the parts or you know sometimes even the self-critic so there's this aspect of our lives some area of our lives right now that we're really identified with and quite engaged with that we keep looking at again and again and again, trying to kind of figure out like a Rubik's Cube. And um, this is particularly going to be an impactful transit for you by way of Saturn being in Pisces. If, for instance, you have your sun or any of your personal planets in Pisces, or if you have it in the opposite sign of Virgo, I have my rising in Virgo, so I am feeling a lot of this in my relationship house right now um, and partnership and contracts around business. And so that's where it's showing up for me, particularly by way of Pisces, but it's going to show up for you where, where, in whatever house of the 12 house system in your natal chart Pisces is in. So it's pretty interesting stuff. And considering that Saturn is going to be in this space of basically moving retrograde over these first seven degrees of Pisces, it's not only going to be impacting you if you're Pisces or Virgo or have those placements in the beginning seven degrees of those two signs, but also if you have any planets placed in the first seven degrees of any of the water signs as well, because the you know that would be more of a beneficial or helpful aspect by way of trine or 120 degree angle, which tend to be, you know, easier for us to deal with. I have a lot of planets in Scorpio. So, you know, it's going to be aspecting me that way. And, you know, now that I think about it, we also have um, Mars and Venus that are over in Leo right now, referenced in the reading today as well. So I'm just going to, you know, reference them as I go through the cards. And if you're interested in having me send you your chart or talking to me about where these particular energies are showing up for you in your chart and in your life, you're welcome to reach out to me at rootsofalchemy at gmail.com or, you know, pre-order a reading through my website, rootsofalchemy.com. Now, 
I'll just go ahead and jump in here. And of course, you know, it's going to show up in specific energies based on your chart. But overall, this is something that we're all working with in some kind of uh, in some kind of range. So this energy of, you know, the page of pentacles is, as I said, you know, that the inner critic, the one who examines things with their mind, it's this mutable earth energy, but it's governed by Mercury. So we have this sense of like looking at something to see if it's practical, to see if it's useful, to see if it's efficient, and really just, you know, trying to separate the coarse from the fine and like sieving things, you know, like if you've ever been on the river and you're like sifting for gold flakes or anything of that capacity or that nature, you know, it's like you're trying to get something finer out of that which is coarse, right? So how do we extrapolate something of value out of a situation that might have been difficult? The challenge that's showing up is the Libra energy behind justice, uh, the justice card, which is a relationship energy and also a contractual energy. And it's interesting that it's showing up as a challenge this week because we do have the South Node moving into Libra, which is really, you know, also bringing our attention to that which we need to let go of, um, that which is no longer serving us in the realm of wherever Libra is at in your chart. So how do you, you know, take in all of the information that is available and act with the conscience of knowing the full truth of the matter. It's a challenge, right? Like often we want to believe the ideal and yet we see here a person who is literally weighing things and finding some way of balance, but it's as a conduit, like they're actually taking in this information from something that's divine, that's much higher than them, and they're allowing this information to come in. Now, you know, usually the justice card is an energetic around having to come up with a decision, like making a choice, right? Because it's justice. It's it's like the judge, you know, they, they have to bring some balance to a situation. And yet the way that we are going to get through this situation came in as the high priestess card. Now, this card does reference the moon energy, and we have a full moon, right, coming up here in a few days in the beginning of the week on the 3rd. And so there is always, whenever there's a full moon, there's things that get brought to the surface, there's things that get revealed. And so we see that this priestess is just waiting. She's allowing information to come in, and she's listening to her intuition, and she's sitting strong in her intuition. So you know, perhaps there's something that we need to examine more inwardly than externally, right? So you can observe like what happens in the outside world. Like for instance, I can observe right now, you know, a horse walking across a pasture and I can observe the grass blowing in the breeze and I can observe the clouds slowly moving in the sky. And those are things that I do externally and they're things that can be measured by other people and seen by other people. But there's something that goes on underneath the surface that is an inner observation or what's called a self-observation. How does your emotional center respond to a situation? How does your mental center respond to a situation? How does your physical center respond to a situation? How does your intellectual center respond to a situation and are they all aligned so there's an there's an energetic to that particularly to keep in mind when you feel like your emotions have kind of been <laughs> swept away in a big current right how do your other centers bring it back to alignment and usually it's through the practice of self-observation now, the ultimate outcome that we have for today came in as the Ten of Cups, which seems like this very uh, lush, happily ever after card. And it is, the, a Ten is this crystallized energy around our emotional center, right? But what's so interesting is that this is followed by some big dogs, the Devil, right? Which is referencing Saturn, ironically, in Pisces. And the Ten of Cups could also be reason to be Pisces or, you know, thought of as a Pisces card. And then the Devil is clarified further by the Hangman, which is also a reference to Pisces. Um, and this, you know, I'm going to talk about the combination here of these energies all together. Um, because, you know, the Devil card is like 
being stuck in some kind of uh, like cycle, you know, where we feel bound by the cycle and we feel like it's, you know, outside of our control, but really it's something that we just aren't seeing clearly. And that's why it's such a cloudy image. And you see these two figures and they're, you know, connected to this gear. And yet the, the chains that are around their neck are loose enough for them to remove them from their neck. So there's this self-imposed limitation that we are getting a chance and an opportunity to review in the space of Pisces in our chart. Now, Pisces is an energy that is very dreamy. It's very um, unlimited, right? It's associated with the ocean, which has like the deepest depths, right? And the biggest range of species of animals and plants and a lot that we don't even know about. And it also has a lot of pressure, right? We just got news that that people went down in a submarine trying to see the Titanic and they and they ended up imploding down there, right? Because of the pressure. And so to consider that we don't really know a lot about the ocean, right? And but we have a lot of ideals of what the possibility is and and it's a limitation that we have self-imposed on ourselves so like when you consider pisces as this dreaminess what is it in that that is keeping you stuck in the situation like is it dreaming of the ideal of a situation that's keeping you stuck in it or dreaming of possibility and is it really um true you know, it's, it's interesting because the devil card is always a card that's like mentioning like we're in the dark about something. And the hanged man is an energetic of yielding to a situation. And, um, you know, it, you don't see him really doing much action here. He's, he's literally just surrendering to a situation and having Saturn in Pisces for two and a half years you know, is some an energy that we're going to have to work with. It's an energy that we have to really, you know, be sober to ourselves around the situation and how we need to show up for it. And I think, honestly, doing the work on self-observation is going to help us in that. Now, I pulled us a couple of other cards, and one of them is the King of Wands, which is associated with Leo energy. And we have Venus, who... Did she go retrograde yet? Dun, 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 dun. She did not go retrograde yet. She's going to be going retrograde later this month. Um, but she's going over her retrograde shadow right now. Mars is also in Leo. So those two energies are in the zodiac sign that this guy represents. You know, and interestingly enough, you know, that Leo energy is square um to the energy that's that is over in Taurus right now because we have Uranus which is square Mars and then we have Venus which is basically square Jupiter right now and it will be moving into square relationship with Uranus and Uranus is the planet of big change so this is this is a really big life shifting few months for us and um you know and it's going to show its own you know, it's going to have 31 flavors, just like Baskin Robbins back in the day. It's going to show up for you in, in with a particular flavor of it. And more intensely, if you have planets that are positioned in close angles or, in, you know, in some kind of either square or trine relationship or sextile relationship or even in the exact degree as where these planets are at. And so it, it does create a lot of change because the fixed signs, which are Leo, Scorpio, Aquarius, and Taurus, they don't like change. And having Uranus as like one of those anchor points, it shifts everything in all the other points when it's connected to it. So it's kind of like a multi-level pinball machine, <laughs> if you want to think of it that way. Um, but this Leo energy or the King of Wands is like, how do we lead, you know? Do we lead with a, a strong arm and a big stick? Or do we lead by example? Do we lead from the heart? And, you know, what is the quality that you honestly want to bring into the situation? And what are you learning through observation that you need to work on? Um, because really, you know, 
we have to look at where our happiness exists. And if it is externally, you know, by watching like the grass blow in the breeze, or if it is something that we work on internally in how we learn how to manage our own system in any particular situation so that we can move through the change with solid feet on the ground. Yeah. It's a big time of change for us all, you know? And, you know, personally, um, I'm, I'm doing some work on putting some like books out there in the world. And that I think is reflective of the Jupiter energy and Uranus energy that are up in my ninth house, which is all about publication and teaching and higher learning. Um, I'm also experiencing a lot of inner reflection right now because Saturn is sitting in opposite opposition, 180 degrees to my rising sign which is Virgo. And I also have Saturn in Virgo at 10 degrees. So I'm actually <laughs> experiencing a Saturn opposition as well, which is also really calling me to be accountable to the things that I want to change and shift in my life and the areas that I feel like I need to step up and be responsible. So it's a profound time for me for sure. And you know, of course, all the Taurus energy in opposition to my Scorpio energy is is doing some stuff and then you know of course Saturn in trine to my part of fortune and will be in trine to my sun but the south node is basically right next to my sun right now too so there's you know <laughs> there's a big transformation process happening in my life right now and uh thanks for supporting me energetically while I go through it I really do appreciate it. And I send you all love, love. Bye for now.